Hello and welcome to this installment of the GLOBE and NGSS webinar series. This is a re-recording of this segment because there were some technical uh, difficulties during the live session. Hello and welcome to this installment of the GLOBE and NGSS webinar series. This is a re-recording of this segment due to, to, to some technical difficulties that happened during the live webinar. The objectives of this webinar are to provide GLOBE trainers and partners an overview of the new document, Connections Between the GLOBE Program and the Next Generation Science Standards. The primary audience for this webinar is GLOBE partners, coordinators, trainers, and scientists. Our presenters are the three members of the project leadership team, Marcy CV from the Iowa Academy of Science, that's me, Dave Babowski from Rate. Wayne Reza and Kristen Wagner from the GLOBE program who are not available for the re-recording. This project was made possible through the support of an NSF grant. This and all of our NGS webinars can be found under the Professional Development Resources on the GLOBE homepage www.globe.gov in the Teaching and Learning tab. And the NGSS final product can be found under the Learning Standards option of the Teaching and Learning tab. We are going to assume that the members of this audience are partners and trainers and thus already familiar with GLOBE. We're also not going to take time today to present an over overview of NGSS. To learn more about the Next Generation Science Standards, you may wish to watch the recordings of our pre-workshop webinars for this project. All four are still available on the GLOBE website. The pre-webinars provide an overview of the seven conceptual shifts of NGSS and a discussion of what those shifts mean for GLOBE. During this webinar, we'll, we will give a brief overview of GLOBE and the NGSS Alignment Workshop Project, and then we'll look at some screenshots of various parts of the final document. Originally, we stopped a couple of times for comments and I'll still show those comment screens, but since this is a re-recording, there'll be no discussion. The diagram on this slide provides an overview of the phases of our project from team recruitment to post-webinar dissemination of information. The major event was a two and a half day workshop that engaged 22 GLOBE community members in the development of draft matches. The workshop was followed by internal and external reviews. This slide lists all of the GLOBE community members who took part in the alignment workshop. I cannot stress enough how important the team selection was to this process. Since our team would only be face to face for two and a half days, it was very important that the time during the workshop be spent on reviewing GLOBE resources for alignment and not on educating members of the team about GLOBE or about NGSS. Team Team members were sought from across the U.S. from Active Globe Partnerships, trainers, teachers, and scientists. Team members were recruited primarily via email to Globe Partnerships and announcements in Globe electronic communications, such as Facebook, newsletters, and posts to forums. Potential team members had to demonstrate prior knowledge of NGSS and agree to participate in or watch pre-workshop webinars. Most team members were already involved in their state-level NGSS review teams or other local NGSS initiatives. Applicants were sorted <coughs> by role in GLOBE, NGSS experience, experience working with specific grade levels, and science backgrounds. More qualified team members applied than were able to participate in the program. So just because someone um, was not selected didn't mean that they were qualified. It probably meant that many other people in their science area or their grade level also applied. The team members were selected so that expertise at all grade levels and all science areas were, were represented. And six teams of three to four members were created. Between the teams and the review phases, there were more than 550 matches between a GLOBE resource and an NGSS student performance expectations. expectation. We will take a look at some of those shortly. Actually, right now. Here is a macro level match table that shows which GLOBE investigation areas include matches for which disciplinary core ideas at middle school. 
the DCIs are on the rows and the globe investigation areas are the columns. And where there is a match, there's either a P or an A. P means that there's at least one protocol that has been identified as appropriate for classroom instruction for at least one of the student performance expectations in that science area. And A means the same thing for globe activities. This table prov is provided for every grade level and can be used to identi quickly identify which areas of NGSS have connections to GLOBE and which do not. These tables were received very positively in the public review, with several reviewers stating that this is where they would start in the search for how to implement NGSS through GLOBE. In fact, one reviewer said that this is all the, the detail that she would need. Tell her which investigation area to concentrate on, and she would pick the individual activities and protocols to use with her class. However, most reviewers wanted this and student performance expectation level matches. Here is a look at the student performance expectation level matches. These matches are presented <coughs> excuse me, these matches are presented by disciplinary core idea, which is what is shown here, and by topic, because it is likely that some states will adopt DCI uh, organization and others will adopt NGSS by topic level. The DCI tables are organized by grade level and then DCI. Shown here are two kindergarten physical science student performance expectations. The first is one that matches to a globe picture book, two accompanying activities, and the surface temperature protocol. All four of these resources could be used together, likely with some non-globe activities, to prepare students to demonstrate that they can make observations to determine the effect of sunlight on the Earth's surface. No GLOBE resources were matched to the second student performance expectation. All matches provide the name of the GLOBE resource, the investigation area, the resource type, and the source. Ideally, our document would include hot links directly to the resource on the web. However, many of the URLs which we did enter into our database became uh, dead URLs before we even got to our two and a half day workshop. And rather than uh, provide links that wouldn't necessarily go, some would go and some wouldn't, we decided to leave this out of the PDF. Hopefully that can be integrated into a future, uh, updated in, in the future. Here's another example from fifth grade of a student performance expectation with lots of matches. This student performance expectation is very well covered by GLOBE. Actually, this is the first of three pages of matches for this expectation. It would be very easy for a teacher to select among these matches and develop a complete GLOBE unit to meet this student performance expectation. And in fact, it would be very easy for two different teachers to develop very different units that used many of these resources and answered this unit. The matches by topic include all of the same student performance expectations and all the same matches to GLOBE, but are arranged by topic. Here, GLOBE is where well represented at the kindergarten level weather and climate topic, which combines physical science and earth science DCIs. And at this time in the live webinar, we'd stopped to have a discussion of how, how can you use these matches within your workshop and in your outreach to schools. During the workshop, all of our teams struggled to evaluate the protocols in relation to NGSS, and it soon became apparent that our alignment document would need to address the nature of GLOBE. Protocols in GLOBE are not designed to stand alone. Each protocol is instructions for data collection, along with some background information about how scientists use the data and ideas about how to analyze the type of data that's collected by that protocol. But protocols are not investigation procedures. 
However, GLOBE teachers do guide their students through the use of protocols that fit in their curriculum. Then they engage their students in asking questions about the observations that they make while collecting GLOBE data. And finally, they work with their students to develop their own student investigations. This is called the GLOBE model for student science research. And some who have been in GLOBE for a very long time <clears throat> will be familiar with other versions of this that were much more text-based and didn't have the diagram. From now on, I'm going to call this the GLOBE uh, MSSR. The GLOBE MSSR provides the structure for the use of GLOBE protocols first to provide students with experiences making observations in the natural world. At this point, GLOBE is really just a service project. Students are collecting data for GLOBE. But we all know that once you have students out in the field making observations, questions follow. And suddenly, while you're out there with your students, you hear things like, I didn't expect the grass to be warmer than the concrete. Or, wait, five types of clouds in the sky? How can there be five types of clouds, of clouds in the sky at the same time? I thought there could only be one type of cloud in the sky at the same time. Or my very favorite is, that's weird. And that's when the MSSR provides the structure for the GLOBE protocols to become a tool for students to develop their own investigations. As they do so, they move into many, but maybe not all of the pathways in this model, often collaborating with classmates, GLOBE and other scientists, and students from other schools. If we were only to match, make direct matches between protocols, activities, and student performance expectations, we would miss a lot of the nature of GLOBE. And at this time during the live recording, uh, we would ask, we asked and had a discussion of how many of you use the MSSR or one of its predecessors, predecessors in your workshops. And then also a discussion of if you don't, what do you do in your professional development to help teachers move from the use of GLOBE as a service project, collecting data just for the scientists, into the development of student investigations? The Next Generation Science Standards Appendix F provides an overview of each practice and a description of the progression of the development of that practice from kindergarten through 12th grade. And we put together a table of these progression bullets for each grade level and then marked the bullets that were addressed someplace within the MSSR. So that would mean here, uh, looking at practice for analyzing and interpreting data for K2, uh, what that would look like in the classroom is students recording observations, thoughts, and ideas, and students using and sharing pictures, drawings, and other writings and observations, etc. So students who are using any GLOBE protocol in their own investigations would be recording information, thoughts, and ideas. Think about metadata. And they'd be using and sharing pictures and drawings and writings of those observations. Some of the other, uh, as well as some of the other bullet points for interpreting data. So we wondered what would it look like if we map the eight practices of science and engineering from NGSS onto the GLOBE MSSR. And we just we didn't want to look at just the practices. We really did want to look at these NGSS progressions for each practice um, and see where each grade level fit so that we could would be able to visualize the difference between a second grader and a tenth grader following the MSSR and what that might look like. And before I show Oh. Excuse me. This is what that looks like. And this may look like a very complex diagram. <clears throat> In this diagram, the red boxes are the K2 practice statements. Those that are on the inside of the GLOBE MSSR are collaborative. And those that are on the outside could be individual or collaborative. In our document, we provide nine maps for each grade level, an individual map for each practice, and a map that combines all eight practices. 
That way you don't have to look at all the matches at once. If a teacher was mostly interested in analyzing and interpreting data, then they could look at practice four. If they were mostly interested in where students ask questions, they look, could look at practice one. And if they're interested in, in how all of them fit, then they could look at the all chart. And then it is our hope that these diagrams might eventually be integrated into the GLOBE website as a clickable interactive so that teachers could toggle on and off only the practices that they're interested in and also maybe look at things like what if we looked at practice number five across all grade levels at the same time? How could we do that um, progression throughout our entire school district? Here we've zoomed in on just a portion of the diagram so you can get a little bit better picture of what they look like. At all grade levels, the MSSR provides students with opportunities to engage in all of the practices of science and engineering save one. No matches were identified between the MSSR and developing and using models. Certainly, GLOBE data could be used to develop a model about how parts of the Earth system work. But the process for how to do this is not built into the protocols themselves or the MSSR. That's something that GLOBE might look at in the future. That doesn't mean that GLOBE doesn't address models. Several of the activities and some of the protocols were identified as matches to modeling as a practice in, the specific, in a specific student performance expectation. As states begin to adopt and implement NGSS, these diagrams may serve as a starting point to identify how GLOBE investigations can provide students with experiences doing the practices. And then the question that we would have asked if we hadn't had the, com the um, technical difficulties is, how could you use the next generation science standard practices mapped to the GLOBE MSSR within your workshops? And this is about where uh, our session cut out. So the next part is new. Finally, there were a couple of products that the team gave to GLOBE, but hasn't put, didn't, did not put into the connections between the GLOBE program and NGSS document. For example, the team identified 106 GLOBE assessment matches. A match for assessment meant that doing the activity or protocol would result in students actually demonstrating mastery of at least two of the three dimensions for that student performance expectation, including the DCI. GLOBE can use this list to develop assessments for NGSS similar to the assessment resources that have been previously developed for the National Science Education Standards and Benchmarks. GLOBE was also provided with a match no match list for all grade levels for GLOBE resources. There were a few GLOBE resources that didn't receive a match and that may have been because that science content is no longer in the standards, or it may be that that science content is in a different grade level, that that resource is not listed as meeting. Um, so that would be a place where GLOBE can look at the matches and the no matches, particularly the no matches, and perhaps have uh, some kind of event where we could adapt activities up or down so that they fit the correct grade level for where that content is in the new standards. And then the last, uh, the last thing is draft unit plans for highly covered student performance expectations. Most of the workshop teams were able to complete their matches and then they looked through all the matches that they had made and they found uh, they selected a highly covered student performance expectation or a couple that were related to each other that were very highly covered and they submitted a draft unit plan for how teachers might actually put together a unit that was globe based to meet that student performance expectation and those will be released separately. Now is the time for questions and I would encourage you if you're watching this recording to submit your questions to one of the GLOBE forums on the GLOBE website. And we should take another moment to acknowledge that this product, 
um, project was funded by the National Science Foundation and supported by the GLOBE program, Michigan Reza, and the Iowa Academy of Science. Thank you again. For more information, please visit the GLOBE website at www.globe.gov.